The Ukrainian Ministry of Defense has released footage which it claims shows a Russian tank being destroyed by a drone which covered it with molten thermite. Over the past few weeks, a number of videos have emerged showing Ukrainian Dragon drones dropping thermite charges on Russian positions. Thermite, a mixture of aluminum and rust, burns at over 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit according to the Science Channel, making it twice as hot as molten lava. The 26-second clip attributed to Ukraine's 30th Mechanized Brigade was shared on X, formerly Twitter, by Kyiv on Friday. For the first time, Ukrainian troops used the thermite-spewing Dragon drone to destroy a Russian tank, according to a report by the 30th Separate Mechanized Brigade, named after Prince Konstantin Ostrowski, posted on Facebook. The brigade's drone battalion, known as the Evil Peregrines, deployed the thermite drone during a recent Russian assault. In the video, which media could not independently verify, the drone's camera shows a tank hitting what appears to be a mine. Afterward, the Dragon drone moves in and by the end of the footage, the tank is engulfed in flames. While in Friday's video, a Russian armored vehicle is filmed advancing, followed by an explosion as it strikes a mine or is hit by a Ukrainian rocket, leaving it damaged. A drone then approaches the vehicle from above and drops molten thermite, causing it to catch fire and become consumed by the blaze. One account of Ukrainian thermite drone use was published in September by two majors, a popular Russian military telegram account with over one million subscribers. Since 2022, the 30th Separate Mechanized Brigade has been active in the Bakhmut sector. In early September, the Ukrainian military introduced the Dragonfire drone, designed to fly low and slow over enemy positions, releasing thermite, a highly incendiary mix of powdered aluminum and ferrous oxide, rust, that burns at temperatures of up to 3,000 degrees Celsius, 5,400 Fahrenheit. The drone creates a flamethrower-like effect igniting tree lines, foliage, and any flammable materials like camouflage netting used by enemy troops. As previously reported by media, the Dragonfire drone itself may not cause significant direct injuries unless someone is struck by burning fragments, but it is highly effective at setting fire to dry crops, trees, and other flammable objects. Tree lines, often used as defensive positions, become vulnerable to secondary fires and smoke, forcing enemy troops out of cover and exposing them to artillery strikes. The U.S. Army, which also uses thermite drones, reports that soldiers have only three to 10 seconds to escape a thermite attack. While in that upload, it said, the Ukrainians also got a new drone that drops a thermite charge. This has given us a headache. At first, we were fiddling with nets so that the drone wouldn't fly into the dugout, then with capes and blankets so as not to be seen in the drone's thermal imager. And now we have to think of how not to get burned from the new drone. On Saturday, the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense released a graphic claiming Russian had suffered 1,280 casualties over the past 24 hours taking their total since the invasion began in February 2022 to 659,220. On the graphic, the Ukrainians said that over the last 24 hours, Russia had also lost eight tanks, 31 infantry fighting vehicles, and 72 artillery pieces on the battlefield. Separately, Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov has said Russia will not hesitate to resume nuclear weapons testing if they are first conducted by the U.S., though there are no indications Washington is planning to do this. Ryabkov's comments were the latest in a series of warnings from Russian officials hinting at nuclear weapon use, which seemed designed to discourage Western military aid to Ukraine. Russian troops have been making slow and costly advances in Ukraine's Donetsk region, which President Vladimir Putin annexed to Russia in September 2022. 
According to Angelica Evans, a Russia researcher with the US-based Institute for the Study of War think tank, Moscow controlled 98.8% of Ukraine's Luhansk province as of October 3rd. Combined, the Luhansk and Donetsk provinces Rich. make up the Donbass. On the other hand, Ukraine's general staff announced that the destruction of the Nebo-M radar will create a critical air corridor for the enhanced use of Storm Shadow and Scalp EG cruise missiles. The Armed Forces of Ukraine, AFU, successfully targeted and destroyed a Russian Nebo-M radar station using ATACMS ballistic missiles, according to Thursday's report from Ukraine's general staff. The destruction of this radar significantly reduces the Russian military's ability to detect, track, and intercept both aerodynamic and ballistic targets, the report said. The Nebo-M radar complex, a highly advanced and costly asset, operates in stealth mode and scans the horizon for aerial threats. It is a system that combines the input of three separate vehicle-mounted radars, working across the VHF, UHF, L, and X wave bands with input controlled from a central command post. The general staff said it assessed that Russia has only 10 functioning systems of this type remaining, each worth over $100 million. According to the general staff, the elimination of the Nebo-M will provide a strategic advantage, allowing Ukraine to create an air corridor for the more effective use of Storm Shadow and Scalp EG cruise missiles. In April 2024, Ukraine received long-range ATAX-MS missiles from the United States, capable of striking targets up to 300 kilometers away, nearly twice the range of the ATAX-MS version first provided to Kiev in late 2023. According to its manufacturer, it can detect targets at ranges up to 600 kilometers, 375 miles away, and to monitor airspace up to 1200 kilometers and relay target locations to anti-aircraft missile systems for interception. Russia claims the radar system is capable of detecting fifth-generation fighter jets such as the US F-22 and F-35 fighter aircraft, as well as long-range ballistic missiles. In April, the Security Service of Ukraine, SBU, successfully targeted a Russian Nebo-U long-range radar station located in the Bryansk region. This radar had been monitoring airspace up to 700 kilometers into Ukrainian territory, according to sources within Ukraine's special services who spoke with media.